When it comes to your sexual health, take it from someone who's been there before. Take it from me. Today, Kieran talks to Brian about getting sober. For me, it wasn't my wife at the time, but it was my family because I was only 24. I'm 58 now, 30, you know, 33 years and change go by and a lot of stuff happens, but I remember back then, some of that stuff like being a blackout drinker where you, as soon as, you know, you take a couple drinks, it's fun, fun, it just, fun. It just leads on. And next on, thing and you on. know, you're yeah. up the next morning and it's, where did I park my car? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, we used to have a joke, and, and it, it, was, it got to be not funny anymore, but it was a joke at first where exactly. I would say, man, what happened last night? And my friends would be like, oh, we went here and we went there, yeah. and I would say, did I have fun? Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I had no idea. Uh -huh. And, uh, and that's scary because yeah. then you or you go out and you look at your car and you want to like walk around it and make sure you didn't run somebody over yeah. or something. I mean, it's serious. I come from a long line of, of drinkers. Every bloody family photo is always, cheers, there you go. Sure. Everyone's holding up a drink. And then I started seeing the amount of bottles and cans that were getting thrown away and I was completely oblivious to it. And um, I have a full-time job at work, Monday to Friday, boom. As soon as I hit the weekend, that's my time off. Right. So as soon as quarantine hit, my brain went, oh, time you're off. off. We're off. Wake Vacation. up with a beer, go to bed with a beer. That's yeah. what I was doing, waking up, six, seven o'clock, because my body was still in the mode of like, right, you gotta get to work. So I'd be up, 5.36, and I'd be like, well, I got nothing to do today, yeah. so. Because I would, I'd get tanked on the weekends, I was good, it was my reward. That's yeah. what I used to think to myself, is that I'm rewarding myself for the job that I'm doing. And um, I think the biggest thing that hurt me the most was it's that gut-wrenching feeling that you have inside, not knowing what happened the night before. And it's that, that awful guilt that almost makes you want to just puke. It's not even from a hangover the next day, knowing the amount that you put away, you should clinically be bloody dead. It's newish for me that I made the decision, and if you want to talk about it from a relationship standpoint, you don't want a babysitter, you want a wife. Right. You know, yeah. and... Um, overwhelming sort of embarrassments. We don't have whatever that thing is inside of us, genetically or whatever, as soon as alcohol hits our system. Mm. Like the normal human being uses it to lower their inhibitions. Mm. It's a social lubricant, yep. meeting, the, meeting girls. For whatever reason though, when an alcoholic drinks alcohol, it triggers something else. And it's there's a phenomenon of cravings that just, I call it the fuck it's. As soon as you get it inside you, a normal human being is gonna go, wow, oh, I'm a little bit tipsy right mm. now, I better stop. And an alcoholic's gonna go, where's the after party? Yeah, you know? let's carry and on. where's the after after party? Yeah. You know, let's get some cocaine and keep it going. Yeah. You know, cocaine might date me because I don't even know if kids do that shit anymore. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if it's even cocaine anymore. Normal people that aren't alcoholics or don't have a problem with alcohol, they mm -hmm. don't think about alcohol <laughs> that much. No. It consumed my thoughts before I got sober, like what the hell am I gonna do? How am I, either how am I gonna get it? How am I gonna get more? Why did I drink so much? Why is my girlfriend mad at me and I can't remember what I did? All those things, you know, it's just like, normal people don't, don't even have to worry about that shit. Yeah. Or they might be like, ooh, I have a little headache today. I drank <laughs> one glass too many of wine. <laughs> I don't relate, man. <laughs> no. My dad's had a drink every single day of his life for the past, what, 80 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm fine. But it's, I could never say no to more than one. It's never come anywhere near. It's never affected my job. I don't like drink before I go to work. I don't drink at work. I, d I don't. If I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. That's my brain. It's the way right. I've been brought up. You're there to do a job. Don't sure. fuck around, period. Right. But yeah, when you come home, let's have a good couple of drinks. Oh, that feels a lot better. There you go, you have your second one, then you realize, I'm not that hungry now, because I'm all liquored up, so it's fine, let me just go to bed. And then that'd be after the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time, so. Yeah, it, come, it kind of spirals. Of course, Yeah, it of definitely course. feeds off of itself. And that functioning thing can keep you from actually getting sober for years. Yeah. Because you think, hey, I, I pull it off, I go to work, yeah. I do my duty, I do what I need to mm -hmm. do, but then, if you really look at it, you're not in a lot of areas. When I finally like got introduced to the 12 step thing, yeah. there was just this one day and I and this little old lady was, she had knitting needles mm. and she was in a meeting. I didn't relate to her on any level, 24 year old punk rock dude mm. and this little old lady knitting and she puts down the thing and she says, 
I just couldn't stop. And I don't even know to this day why when she said that, it like, it hit me yeah, right yeah. in the heart. Yeah. And I knew that that lady was exactly like me. And then she went on to say how like, hey, when I started doing the steps and I started listening to these people, all of a sudden now I can have a life. And, it, and, it, and it's weird because somebody like yourself, being in your 30s and having success and doing things and stuff, it's easier to say like, well, that guy was a loser. He was worse than I was, or you know what I mean? Mm. There's all these different levels. I don't say I lost everything in my life. Mm. I never had anything to lose at 24 yet. I wasn't yeah. doing, I was just some loser 24 year old guy. But weirdly enough, I was always trying to do bands. I was always trying to do music. I got sober and mm -hmm. I met a bunch of guys they, that were all sober too. And we ended up forming this band and we got a cult following and made albums and toured the United States and <laughs> Canada a bunch of times and had That's wonderful. all these great times. And everyone on the road would just be, you guys are sober? You guys yeah. are crazy on yeah. stage. This is the craziest fun band ever. And I can't believe you're st you guys are all sober. Yeah. I'm starting to remember things a lot more. I didn't realize as I, I felt like my, my brain was sort of starting to, <laughs> as a weird analysis, was starting to turn out into pieces of wet cake, mm -hmm. just falling away. Right. That's what it felt like. And I think to numb it, you'd have another drink and then you'd be okay that your brain is falling apart. Right. And then you'd wake up the next morning going, this is wrong, so to numb that, you'd be like, all right, well, let's have another drink and just carry on. And right. it just became that sort of vicious cycle. I was like, this, this, this is destructive, extremely destructive. When you're newly sober and you're going, each new thing I do, mm -hmm. it's another little tick on the, you can check them off on yeah. the box. Like, I remember for me, it was like, I had never, gone on a date with a woman sober. I had never <laughs> had sex sober. I had never done yeah. any, like all this stuff, it was like, holy shit, this is a brand new thing. And you, you're discovering these new things every, like sitting down, it's like, this is totally, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. If mm. and normally I would take a couple drinks to loosen up yeah. and then I would just talk and talk and talk. Yeah. But then you get through it sober and mm. you're like, I can do it. Yeah. I am capable of having a personality <laughs> and being sober. Going to a party and just thinking like, what do I do if someone hands me a beer? What do I say? What do I do? Yeah. You know, I just say no thank you. So it's kind of amazing because you get to you get to experience a bunch of things and you feel feelings. Sometimes we don't want to feel them. Mm. The longer I stay sober, I realize all we have is right now. And so that one day at a time principle is just, it's amazing. If you blow it with somebody, even if you mess up and drink, you have the next day, you have a, the next day you get up, you can start all over hmm. and not drink. That one day at a time principle has carried me through 33 years and it's been a, it's been a good life. The best part of it is I don't usually, usually, I don't have to wake up and apologize for anything, especially things I don't remember. If I'm apologizing for something, it's something I do remember, which is a blessing, you know. For more trusted sources on the topics that matter to you, go to getmegiddy.com.